Before he became the best in the world, CM Punk was a kid named Philip Brooks. Born in Chicago, Punk grew up in the nearby city of Lockport. His father struggled with alcoholism, which made CM Punk want to live a drug and alcohol-free life and got him into the straight edge lifestyle. He also got into wrestling, with Roddy Piper being a big source of inspiration. Punk's first foray into wrestling was backyard wrestling. This is where he'd get the name CM Punk, which originally stood for Chick Magnet before being changed to Chicago Made. While he enjoyed backyard wrestling, Punk wanted to take things to the next level. The stray edge wrestler found a school and started to properly train. CM Punk also began making friendships and connections and soon began wrestling on the independent scene. Slowly but surely, CM Punk started making a name for himself and continued performing on bigger stages and in front of larger crowds. He soon got the attention of WWE. They wanted to see what he could do, so they gave CM Punk a tryout match on TV, and this would be CM Punk's first time in a WWE ring. In his debut, CM Punk teamed up with a guy named Chad Russell Simpson and went up against the team of Maven and Simon Dean on Sunday Night Heat. Simpson started the match, but quickly gained control and tagged in Punk. The straight edge wrestler beat up Maven with punches and kicks, but was knocked down when Simon Dean hit him while the referee wasn't looking. This put Maven in the driver's seat and he soon tagged out with Simon Dean. Dean continued to punish the young CM Punk until Maven tagged back in. Thinking fast, Punk caught himself on the rope and countered Maven's drop kick. This gave CM Punk just enough time to tag out. Unfortunately, Maven and Dean got the better of Chad Russell Simpson, forcing Punk to walk away in defeat. This was just a squash match, but one interesting fact is that this match took place in CM Punk's home state of Illinois, in a city called Moline. While the match wasn't much, it did get WWE interested in CM Punk. Punk would wrestle a few more WWE tryouts until finally getting offered a contract. He was assigned to OVW, WWE's development system at the time, and began training and appearing on their weekly show. About a year later, in July 2006, Punk would appear on WWE's recently relaunched ECW. He appeared in promo videos talking about his strange lifestyle. Additionally, WWE also gave Punk's character a background in the martial art Muay Thai. <laughs> WWE predicted CM Punk's UFC career. Anyways, after about two months of promos, CM Punk made his in-ring debut, taking on and defeating ECW original Just Incredible in the historic Hammerstein Ballroom. The crowd loved him, and Punk's WWE career was off and running. His first feud was kind of bizarre. Kelly Kelly began to show a romantic interest in CM Punk. This made her boyfriend, Mike Knox, jealous and led to several matches between Knox and Punk all of which CM Punk won. Additionally, Punk would be part of D-Generation X and the Hardys Survivor Series team where CM Punk's side won. Then, at the December to Dismember pay-per-view, Punk was one of six participants in the Extreme Elimination Chamber match for the ECW Championship. Unfortunately, this is where Punk's momentum ran out. Not only did he lose the match, but he was the first wrestler to be eliminated. It was a sad way to end Punk's debut year, and unfortunately, things would get worse before they'd get better. In January 2007, Punk lost his first singles match when Hardcore Holly defeated him. He also participated in the Royal Rumble and the WrestleMania Money in the Bank ladder match, but lost both matches. Around this time, there was a war going on in ECW between the New Breed and the ECW Originals. Both sides had been trying to recruit Punk, and the strange wrestler ended up going with the New Breed. However, it was all a trick. Two weeks after joining the group, CM Punk turned on them and aligned himself with the ECW Originals. Punk would then challenge and defeat the New Breed leader, Elijah Burke. CM Punk also joined the ECW Originals in a tables match against the New Breed, where Punk also won. Soon after, the ECW champion Bobby Lashley would be drafted to Raw and forced to vacate the title. This set up a tournament to crown a new champion. Punk entered and did pretty well, so well that he made it to the final round. He was originally supposed to face Chris Benoit, but ended up facing John Morrison instead, for reasons you probably already know. Morrison ended up defeating CM Punk, but the Chicago native wasn't done yet. Over the next few pay-per-views, CM Punk kept challenging John Morrison for the ECW title, but was always unsuccessful. Finally, Punk had his final chance in September 2007. It was now or never, and luckily for CM Punk, now was the time. The future best in the world defeated his rival and won his first championship in WWE. For the rest of the year, CM Punk would successfully defend the title against the likes of The Miz, Big Daddy V, Elijah Burke, and others. However, in January 2008, Punk's reign ended when he was defeated by Chavo Guerrero, thanks to interference from Edge. Over the next few weeks, the former champion tried to regain his title, but with no luck. 
However, CM Punk would be presented with a new opportunity when he qualified for the Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania 24. This time, Punk was successful and earned himself a championship match at any time. CM Punk held onto the briefcase for a while and would eventually get drafted to Raw. It didn't take long for Punk to make an impact. One week after getting drafted, CM Punk cashed in his contract after Batista had attacked Edge. Punk capitalized and got even with the man who cost him the ECW title by taking Edge's World Heavyweight Championship. That same night, Punk would defend his newly won title against JBL and was successful. Over the next several months, Punk remained champion, but it seemed as though the focus was always on other stars. This led to an underwhelming title reign that ended at Unforgiven when Punk was attacked by Randy Orton and the Legacy and was forced to vacate the title. He would get a rematch against the man who won his vacated championship, Chris Jericho, but the Stray Edge star failed to become a two-time World Heavyweight Champion. Punk picked himself up and ended up being put into a tag team with Kofi Kingston. It was a surprise pairing, but worked out pretty well. Punk and Kofi won the World Tag Team Championship in their second match as a tag team. Like Punk's World Heavyweight Championship title reign, his tag team title reign had an underwhelming finish. After holding the gold for 47 days, CM Punk and Kofi Kingston lost the titles at a non-televised WWE show. However, at the same time, CM Punk entered a tournament with the winner getting an Intercontinental Championship match. Punk ultimately won the whole thing when he last defeated Rey Mysterio. On the first Raw of 2009, CM Punk got his Intercontinental title match against the champion, William Regal. Regal ended up disqualifying himself, which prompted Stephanie McMahon to give Punk a rematch the next week. However, this time, CM Punk got himself disqualified. This set up a third match that was no DQ. Finally, CM Punk defeated William Regal and won the IC title in his home state of Illinois. Unfortunately, like his tag team title reign, Punk's run at the Intercontinental Championship didn't last long. In March 2009, CM Punk was defeated by his old rival, JBL, and lost the title. However, things weren't all bad. CM Punk would again qualify for the Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania. Also like last year, Punk won, making him the first person to win Money in the Bank twice. In a weird coincidence, after winning the briefcase, Punk was also drafted, this time going to SmackDown. On the blue brand, CM Punk would try to cash in his briefcase, but was thwarted by Umaga. This led to two pay-per-view matches, with Umaga winning the first and Punk winning the second. The same night the Stray Edge wrestler defeated the Samoan Bulldozer, CM Punk cashed in his briefcase to defeat the recently crowned World Heavyweight Champion, Jeff Hardy. Hardy, of course, was entitled to a rematch, and the two would go one on one at the Bash pay per view. During their match, Punk kicked the referee and got himself disqualified. CM Punk claimed his eye was injured and couldn't see, but Jeff Hardy didn't believe him. This marked the beginning of Punk turning into a villain. His transformation was complete when CM Punk started saying he was superior to Jeff and his fans because he lived a drug free life. With things hotter than before, Punk and Jeff had another match at Night of Champions, where the charismatic Enigma defeated the Straight Edge Champion. However, it was CM Punk who got the last laugh. Punk defeated Jeff Hardy at the next pay-per-view, SummerSlam, and became a three-time World Heavyweight Champion. On top of that, CM Punk would face Jeff Hardy in a steel cage match, with the loser being forced to leave WWE. Throwing salt into the wound, CM Punk defeated Jeff and finished the rivalry. Rewinding just a little bit, after CM Punk beat Hardy at SummerSlam, Punk was attacked by The Undertaker. This led to Punk and Taker facing off in a submission match for the World Championship. Undertaker won after CM Punk tapped out to the Hell's Gate submission hold. However, moments after the victory, the SmackDown general manager, Teddy Long, came out to say the Hell's Gate was banned and restarted the match. CM Punk managed to lock the dead man in the Anaconda Vice, which prompted the referee to call for the bell, even though Undertaker never tapped out. This was a reference to the Montreal Screwjob, which happened in the same arena 12 years earlier. The Undertaker was not happy, and kidnapped and tortured Teddy Long until Long gave him a rematch against CM Punk. The two fought again inside Hell in a Cell, where the Stray Edge Champion lost for good this time. Punk would get a few more shots at the gold, but was unsuccessful. After this, CM Punk began the Stray Edge Society. The first member was Luke Gallows, who had previously wrestled in WWE as Festus. Punk explained that he got Gallows off the drugs he was on and therefore got rid of the mental issues Festus had. Going into 2010, CM Punk would begin converting audience members 
to his strated society, symbolized by shaving their heads. Most of these people were never seen again, except for one named Serena, who began accompanying Punk and Gallows. Punk entered the 2010 Elimination Chamber, but was taken out by Rey Mysterio. This started a feud that famously saw CM Punk ruin Mysterio's daughter's 9th birthday party. Punk and Rey would eventually agree to a match at WrestleMania 26, where if Punk defeated Rey, the Mysterio would have to join the Strange Society. The joke was on CM Punk the entire time, because Rey Mysterio was already bald. Despite that, Rey won and defeated Punk. A rematch took place the next pay-per-view, Extreme Rules, where if Punk lost, he would have to shave his head. Luckily, a new masked member of the Straight Edge Society, who later turned out to be Joey Mercury, helped Punk win the match and save his hair. With one win each, CM Punk and Rey Mysterio decided to go at it a third time, with both stipulations on the line. In the end, Punk lost and was forced to have his head shaved. Afterward, Punk began wearing a mask to hide his baldness, but Big Show had other plans. The giant unmasked CM Punk, which started a rivalry, Punk, along with Joey Mercury and Luke Gallows, fought Big Show at SummerSlam in a handicap match. CM Punk would abandon his teammates during the fight, ultimately costing them the match. The strange wrestler would face Big Show himself at the next pay-per-view, Night of Champions, but the world's largest athlete still came out on top. This also marked the end of the strange society, and it was made official when CM Punk fought and defeated Luke Gallows. Punk would then get drafted back to Raw and earn a spot on the show's bragging rights team. Ironically, CM Punk was eliminated by his former rival, Rey Mysterio, during the match. Shortly after that, the Chicago-made Punk suffered a hip injury and was out of action. Rather than take him off TV, WB had CM Punk begin commentating on Raw. This only lasted about a month, until Punk would attack John Cena. As it turned out, CM Punk was taking over the group, The Nexus. With The Nexus under his control, Punk made each member take some kind of physical punishment to prove themselves. While some agreed, others didn't and chose to leave the group. Still, CM Punk had a small army and used it to cost Randy Orton his WWE Championship match at the 2011 Royal Rumble. Punk's reason for doing this was actually pretty smart. Something else that's pretty smart is signing up for DraftKings Sportsbook, this video's sponsor. I'm going to explain why in just 60 seconds while also making as many wrestling references as I can. Ready? Let's go. UFC 276 takes place on July 2nd and they are going all in. Israel Adesanya and Jared Cannonier face off for the middleweight championship and Alexander Volkanovsky and Max Holloway have their third fight for the featherweight title. It's going to be a big show and you can be part of this smackdown by signing up for DraftKings Sportsbook. What makes DraftKings the best in the world? Well, new customers can bet just $5 on UFC 276 and get $100 in free bets. And it doesn't matter what the winner's name is or how the fight ends. Still not sure if DraftKings is the legit boss? Well, DraftKings is the one and only sports book that offers same game parlays on UFC events. Plus, combine multiple bets for a shot at a bigger payout. If Sportsbook isn't available where you live, check out DraftKings Daily Fantasy where they have huge contests for this weekend's fight. If you're a new DraftKings customer, download the Sportsbook app using the link in the description. Enter promo code TAPOUT, chokeslam $5 on UFC 276, and get $100 in free bets no matter what. That's code TAPOUT this Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of UFC. Anyways, CM Punk revealed that the reason he cost Orton the WWE Championship was to get revenge for what the Viper did to Punk back in 2008. It may not have been the wisest decision because this turned Orton into a one-man wrecking crew. The Apex Predator would go after every member of CM Punk's Nexus and Orton would defeat Punk at WrestleMania 27 and had extreme rules. The Stray Edge wrestler would rebound from this loss by winning a number one contenders match for the WWE Championship. After that, Punk would reveal that his WWE contract would expire at Money in the Bank, the same event where Punk would get his WWE title match. Soon after, CM Punk gave his famous pipe bomb promo where he publicly aired the real frustrations he had with WWE. This transformed Punk from a popular wrestler to a megastar. In the storyline, CM Punk would be suspended but was reinstated after the WWE Championship Champion John Cena insisted. The two finally had their much anticipated match at Money in the Bank. With the crowd mostly behind the Chicago native, CM Punk was able to defeat John Cena and win the WWE Championship. As previously mentioned, Punk 
Adam's contract expired shortly after the match, so he took the title and ran. In the meantime, a tournament was set up to crown a new WWE Champion. Rey Mysterio won it eight days after mining the bank and had to defend the WWE Championship the same night against John Cena. Cena won, but was interrupted by a returning CM Punk, who still had his WWE Championship. To determine the undisputed champion, Punk and Cena fought each other in a rematch at SummerSlam, with Triple H as the special guest referee. CM Punk won, despite Cena's foot touching the rope. However, the undisputed WWE Champion was then attacked by a returning Kevin Nash. In all the chaos, the Money in the Bank winner, Alberto Del Rio, cashed in his contract and took the WWE Championship from CM Punk. The next night, Punk accused Kevin Nash of working with Triple H to take the WWE title away from him. This set up a match between Nash and Punk at the next pay-per-view, Night of Champions. However, when CM Punk kept making verbal attacks against Triple H's wife, Stephanie McMahon, the game decided to fight CM Punk instead. The two legends fought in a no DQ match, which saw Kevin Nash, as well as The Miz and R-Truth, attack both men. All the chaos allowed the game to beat CM Punk. Miz and Truth would attack CM Punk again during a Hell in a Cell match, leading to a temporary alliance between Punk and Triple H. They fought the awesome Truth at Vengeance, but failed to get the win when Kevin Nash attacked the game. After that, CM Punk set his sights on reclaiming the WWE Championship. He got himself a title shot at Survivor Series against Alberto Del Rio. Punk was successful and kicked off his second run with the belt. The Straight Edge Champion held onto the title for the rest of 2011, but on the final Raw of the year, he would get pinned by Dolph Ziggler in a non-title match. This awarded Ziggler a championship match, which CM Punk lost via countout after the interim Raw general manager, John Laurinaitis, interfered. Laurinaitis continued to be a thorn in CM Punk's side, but despite that, the best in the world was able to retain his WWE Championship. Soon after feuding with Dolph Ziggler, CM Punk began a rivalry with Chris Jericho after Y2J attacked Punk during the match. Jericho claimed that everyone on the WWE roster was copying him and Punk was the worst offender. The two would meet again along with four other wrestlers inside the Elimination Chamber. While CM Punk did win, Chris Jericho never got eliminated due to Punk kicking Jericho out of the chamber and temporarily injuring him. Soon after, Chris Jericho earned the right to challenge CM Punk at WrestleMania 28. Before the match, Chris Jericho began taunting Punk by revealing that CM Punk's father was an alcoholic and alleged that Punk's sister was a drug addict. In the weeks before the match, John Laurinaitis added a special stipulation to CM Punk and Chris Jericho's match that the title would change hands via disqualification. This led to Jericho trying to get CM Punk to hit him with a weapon during the WrestleMania bout. Punk didn't give in and ended up winning and retaining his title. A rematch was eventually set up for Extreme Rules in Punk's hometown of Chicago. Fitting with the pay-per-view, the two fought in a street fight. The best in the world proved why he was called that and beat Y2J again. At the next pay-per-view, Over the Limit, CM Punk fought Daniel Bryan. It was a very close match, with Punk tapping out seconds after he pinned Bryan. This enraged Daniel and caused him to interfere during two matches between Punk and Kane. To make things even crazier, AJ Lee, Daniel Bryan's ex-girlfriend, began showing interest in CM Punk and Kane. AJ even tried to propose to CM Punk at one point. This did end up benefiting Punk though, when he fought Kane and Daniel Bryan in a triple threat match. Lee distracted the Big Red Machine, allowing CM Punk to take advantage and retain the title. CM Punk and Daniel Bryan would also face off in a rematch with AJ Lee as the special guest referee. Despite not knowing what AJ Lee would do, CM Punk still managed to win the match. With all that behind him, CM Punk appeared on the special 1000th episode of Raw. Unfortunately, the best in the world was interrupted by The Rock. The Great One revealed he would challenge whoever the WWE Champion was at the 2013 Royal Rumble, creating some tension. Later that night, CM Punk fought John Cena for the WWE Championship. During the match, Big Show interfered and attacked Cena. This prompted The Rock to make the save, but he was then attacked by CM Punk. Punk explained the next week that he was tired of people like The Rock and John Cena overshadowing him, despite being the WWE Champion, and he started demanding respect. After that, Punk would face John Cena and The Big Show at SummerSlam. Cena and Punk both submitted the Giants simultaneously, causing a draw. 
However, AJ Lee, who had become Raw General Manager, restarted the match. Cena hit the giant with an AA, but Punk capitalized by throwing Cena out of the ring and pinning Big Show. Soon after, CM Punk would align himself with Paul Heyman. With Heyman by his side, CM Punk fought John Cena one-on-one -on -one again at Night of Champions. The match ended in a draw due to both men having their shoulders on the mat at the same time. Punk and Cena were originally set to go at it again inside Hell in a Cell, but Cena was eventually removed and replaced with Ryback. The big guy had never been defeated, but the WWE Champion had a plan. In the closing moments of the match, the referee low-blowed Ryback, allowing Punk to get the pinfall. While the ref denied working for CM Punk, it was later found out that he did. In the aftermath, CM Punk was put in a triple threat match against John Cena and Ryback at Survivor Series. It looked like Punk had finally met his match, but thanks to help from a group of intruding wrestlers, later called The Shield, the WWE Champion was able to retain his title. This also meant that CM Punk had been WWE Champion for over a year. Unfortunately, shortly after this huge accomplishment, Punk needed surgery to repair a partially torn meniscus. The best in the world didn't return to action until January 2013, when he defended his title against Ryback. Like their previous encounter, the Shield interfered, allowing Punk to win. It was soon revealed that the Shield was secretly working for CM Punk and Paul Heyman, like the referee. With the big guy out of the way, CM Punk turned his attention to The Rock, who, as you might remember, said he would challenge for the WWE Championship at the 2013 Royal Rumble. Because of that, CM Punk already had a challenger for the pay-per-view. A stipulation was added where Punk would lose the title if the Shield interfered. This seemed like a foolproof plan, but during the match, the lights suddenly went out. When they turned back on, The Rock had been put through the announcer's table. This allowed Punk to pin the Great One and retain the title. However, Vince McMahon realized what was going on and was going to award the title to The Rock, but the Brahma Bowl requested that the match be restarted. It ended up not mattering, because The Rock won and ended CM Punk's historic title reign. The best in the world did get his rematch at Elimination Chamber, but Punk's time as WWE Champion was over. With that chapter done, CM Punk decided to go after the next best thing, The Undertaker's WrestleMania streak. Punk earned the right to face the dead man at Mania and began getting under the Phenom's skin. In a controversial moment, CM Punk began making disrespectful marks towards Paul Bearer, who had recently passed away. Nonetheless, CM Punk and The Undertaker fought on the grandest stage of them all. Just like everyone before him, CM Punk fell victim to the Tombstone Piledriver and lost the match. After the defeat, CM Punk would disappear from WWE for a while. When he returned, Punk ended his alliance with Paul Heyman. Heyman wasn't too happy about this and had his other client, Brock Lesnar, attack CM Punk. Additionally, Paul Heyman himself would assault Punk during the Money in the Bank ladder match. All this led to Punk and Brock Lesnar fighting it out at SummerSlam. The match was no disqualification, and thanks to Paul Heyman's interference, the Beast won. The rivalry would continue, but without Brock. Instead, CM Punk feuded with Heyman and his newer client, Curtis Axel. The best in the world fought both of them in a no disqualification 2 on 1 handicap match. After eliminating Axel, CM Punk had Paul Heyman all to himself. Punk's sweet revenge was unfortunately interrupted by his former rival, Ryback. The big guy had joined forces with Heyman and Axel, allowing Paul to pin the best in the world. CM Punk would get his hands on Ryback at the next pay per view, Battleground, and got the victory. After that, CM Punk fought Paul Heyman once more. This time, Heyman was paired with Ryback, and the match took place inside Hell in a Cell. Just like their match a year earlier, CM Punk defeated the Human Wrecking Ball, and also gave his former manager a GTS for good measure. There was no rest for CM Punk though, as he and Daniel Bryan would both be victims of attacks by the Wyatt family. The former enemies became tag team partners as they worked together to defeat the Wyatts at Survivor Series. The following night, the Wyatts took Daniel Bryan hostage. Punk tried to save Bryan, but was attacked by the men that used to work for him, the Shield. CM Punk believed that the Authority, who had taken control of WWE at this point, ordered the Shield to assault him. This caused the Authority to put CM Punk in a 3 on 1 handicap match against the Shield at TLC. Despite the odds not being in his favor, CM Punk was able to win the match after Roman Reigns accidentally speared Dean Ambrose. Punk continued to butt heads with the Authority, specifically the Director of Operations, Kane. The Devil's Favorite Demon punished CM Punk by making him the first entrant in the 2014 Royal Rumble. Little did we know, but this would be the last time we would see CM Punk in WWE.
For the first time since 2011, CM Punk entered the Royal Rumble match. As mentioned, Punk was the first man out. Fittingly, the person who entered at number two was Seth Rollins. Once the rumble officially started, CM Punk immediately backed Rollins into a corner. The two started throwing fists and kicks at each other and went back and forth over who was in control. Ultimately, the two knocked themselves both out with kicks to the head. The next entrant then came out, which was Damian Sandow. Sandow went after Punk, aligning himself with Seth Rollins. Punk managed to fight them both off, but the numbers eventually caught up to him. Luckily, the fourth entrant, Cody Rhodes, ran out and went after Damian Sandow, until getting attacked by Seth Rollins. CM Punk then focused on Sandow and quickly eliminated him. After that, Punk and Cody formed their own alliance against Seth Rollins. Unfortunately, it got demolished once entry number 5, Kane, got into the ring. Kane naturally had his sights on the best in the world and brought the fight straight to him. However, a well-placed kick and perfect timing allowed CM Punk to eliminate the Big Red Machine. While this was a small victory, there was no rest as Rusev entered the match. The Bulgarian brute destroyed everyone, including CM Punk. The best in the world felt the pain and had to remain low. Jack Swagger entered the match next, followed by Kofi Kingston, the latter giving Punk a clothesline that can cuss him for real. Punk managed to stay alive despite both Kofi and Cody Rhodes trying to eliminate him. Jimmy Uso entered at number 9 and gave CM Punk an up-close look at his head. Punk would get back on his feet and try to choke out Rusev, but had no success. Punk would try again and, along with three other participants, was able to eliminate Rusev. Punk also tried to eliminate his former tag team partner, Kofi Kingston, but Kofi wasn't finished yet. Dean Ambrose came out at number 11 and began attacking CM Punk. Punk tried to fight back, but the match is beginning to take a toll on him. Jack Swagger tried to eliminate the former WWE Champion, but CM Punk managed to survive. For the next while, CM Punk stayed pretty quiet, mostly sticking towards one of the corners. However, he partnered with Goldust to beat up Seth Rollins. At entry number 14, Kevin Nash made a surprise appearance. Considering what Kevin Nash did to CM Punk in the past, it was smart for Punk to avoid getting in Nash's way. Roman Reigns, the final member of the Shield, then entered the Royal Rumble and kicked CM Punk in the head. While the best in the world was still in the match, the Shield began taking over. Eventually, the Hounds of Justice had eliminated everyone except CM Punk. Before they could take him out, backup arrived in the form of Sheamus. The Shield turned their attention to the Celtic Warrior, giving Punk a chance to catch his breath. The Miz then came out at number 18, and Fandango at number 19. The entire time, CM Punk remained practically motionless in the corner. El Torito was the next man to enter the Rumble. He ended up challenging the best in the world and actually took CM Punk for a ride. Despite this, Punk would soon get back on his feet and started a fight with Rowan Reigns. Cesaro was the next man in the match and almost took Punk for a swing, but the shield of all people saved him. Luke Harper joined at number 22 and knocked CM Punk out with a hard clothesline. Once he regained consciousness, Punk started a fight with Roman again, but the best in the world was starting to run on empty. Harper then tried to eliminate the former WWE Champion, but somehow CM Punk managed to stay in the ring. After a little break, CM Punk set his sights on Cesaro, but he was unsuccessful. Roman Reigns then went after CM Punk again, but stopped when he, Seth, and Dean all suddenly turned their attention to the Wyatts. Ryback then entered at number 26, but CM Punk could barely stand at this point. Seth Rollins and Punk tried to eliminate each other, but neither one would go over the top rope. Just then, the buzzer sounded for number 28, and it was Batista. The animal knocked out just about everyone, including CM Punk. Punk wisely avoided Batista and instead tried to eliminate Sheamus. When that didn't go anywhere, CM Punk targeted Batista, who had now been worn down. Unfortunately, the best in the world just didn't have the strength and was struggling to survive much less eliminate people. The final entrant, Rey Mysterio, then entered. The master of the 619 brought the fight right to CM Punk. Probably still upset about Punk ruining his daughter's birthday. Anyways, CM Punk continued to fight, but he had almost nothing left. As the match wore on, more wrestlers were eliminated, but Punk stayed in there and even made it to the final four. He dished out GTSs to Sheamus and Roman Reigns, but was then unceremoniously eliminated by Kane, who had come back out. The Big Red Machine didn't stop there, and sent CM Punk through the announcer's table. Hey, what goes around comes around. 
CM Punk was eventually helped to the back, and that was the last fans would see of CM Punk in WWE. This isn't the ideal final match for any career, but I don't think it was awful. I thought Punk went out looking really good, with him starting as the first entrant and making it all the way to the final four. The ending with Kane was meant to fuel their rivalry and likely lead to a match, but as we're about to find out, that never happened. The next night, CM Punk would walk out of WWE. He would later say the main reason was his health. He had broken ribs, injured knees, a staph infection, and concussions. There were other reasons too, but all this ultimately led to CM Punk permanently leaving WWE. It wouldn't be until 2021 that CM Punk officially returned to wrestling when he joined AEW. Considering how their relationship ended, it's unlikely we'll see CM Punk return to WWE. However, you can return to watching more belt-to-belt -belt videos by hitting the playlist on screen.